So my name is Rupa Sunku, and uh, I work with Oracle on the profit side of business. And on the nonprofit, I am part of uh, Touch a Life, working with uh, um, the team and leading the team as the chief evangelist of the career help. The other part of my uh, nonprofit work is with my own community, where I'm trying to empower them and get them to assimilate in the culture and the community that we live in. So talking about career and uh, how does career uh, eliminate poverty, Nelson Mandela says, like slavery and apartheid, poverty is not natural. It's man-made and it can be overcome and eradicated by the action of human beings. So as I got ready to um, prepare this um, conversation with you, I came upon a point in my life when I had to make a decision of being philanthropic, either by providing food and shelter or give another family food, shelter, and education along with my mentoring experiences of life. Guess what? What I did by just offering food and shelter was create a circular dependency on the system. While if I gave them education and mentoring assistance, this gave them an opportunity to come out of the poverty trap. And that to me is a simple yet powerful definition of philanthropy and to be able to create that change that I would like to in society. So looking at some of the stats, um, <laughs> looks like the slides are not progressing. Um, let's go on to the next. Go over next. Yeah, let's stop right there. Thank you. So in terms, thanks. Uh, in terms of the statistics, some appalling numbers. Overall poverty rate is about 11 and a half percent. Within that, Children poverty is 16%. And then to look at women's poverty, which is near and dear to my heart, is almost 12.5%. What I have uh, understood or what I'd like you to kind of consider is that there are various factors or segmentations of society that need more help than the others. So children and women can absolutely afford more mentoring and guidance in order to come out of that poverty trap that I spoke about. An interesting uh, fact, or a factoid, microloan officers or microloan uh, lenders often give loans to women because they have success rate of being able to fulfill those loans and pay back their loans. So why not encourage the career and the development and uh, the manifestation of uh, women uh, in our uh, strategy here. Poverty is just, uh, poverty is a condition or an impact that is because of not enough resources that meet the basic needs of people. However, poverty is multifaceted and nuanced because it has so many forms of poverty. Different types of poverty affect different people in different ways. So I'd like to kind of talk to you all through a couple of um, uh, poverty definitions. One is absolute poverty. This is when people are unable to meet their basic needs of food and shelter. How do you help this person? Start them off with providing the basics of food and shelter, but then encouraging them and showing them the visions of being able to come out of that poverty trap. And that is through education and uh, some of the programs or social facilities that are out there uh, to be uh, taken on so that they can feel empowered and come out of that absolute po poverty state. The next one would be relative uh, poverty. And this is based on where you are and what is the manifestations of poverty in the life that you're leading. 
So a good example of this would be a teacher who has a good job, but living in the Bay Area, for example, is unable to cope with some of the impacts of uh, the community, high cost of living, housing, etc. So now this is a person that has a career, that has a job, that has the education, and is an educator themselves, but unable to get out of that poverty trap. So this is an opportunity for us to work with those sort of folks to say, let's go ahead and get you guys into some of the programs that are available from the government or the public sector and say, let's say we talk about uh, Section 8 housing uh, to be able to help them come out of it rather than them living in a car and using the public facilities to get back into school and be positive and inspire children. So that's about relative poverty. So we need to look at the different manifests of poverty across the board. Then we talk about what we call as the rural poverty. And that is poverty because the infrastructure doesn't support them. And that, again, can be overcome with different uh, venues or avenues, sorry. And to me, the biggest example that I see in front of me is uh, Zoho, which is a technology company here in the Bay Area, uh, run by Sridhar uh, Vembu. And he has just done something really good. He's paying the uh, path forward for his village in India, in Tamil Nadu. And he has set up a school where he says, I will give you a job if you could learn Java coding. That's all I need for my company today. So uh, you guys don't have to go through an entire degree of computer science or any other education. Stick to what I need and what I can remunerate because I can give you a job if you do well in that. So again, different facets, different poverty levels, different avenues can be um, afforded to them. The next one is the urban poverty and you may say, Okay, uh, how does urban America or urban uh, global cities have poverty? And you have to realize there is so much competition in urban America or in any part of the world. And so these are families struggling not with poverty from uh, essentials and the uh, basic necessities, but they are struggling with the competition and not being able to scale and cope up with that poverty. And so what is it that you can do? Give them the opportunities and help them fulfill their dreams. So mentoring plays a really, really big part. Even if you have the education, the guidance, the mentoring, the uh, sort of support system uh, that you are um, creating for them gives you the opportunity to go about uh, handling urban poverty. All right, um, and so the next uh, thing that I want to kind of talk about is people talk about uh, careers. Now, there are folks who take on jobs just because they want to get by, right, as the word stands, just because of them, their need to get by. Well, I would encourage people to take on careers because that word career is very powerful and it is also an opportunity to create a road or a path to help you feel engaged, putting in your darnest and earnest efforts to succeed and realizing your dreams. So looking at these two definitions from my vantage point, I would say go for a career. And what does that need? A mentor to help support you, guide you, and take you through. Because when you are amidst the poverty and elements of poverty, you can't think beyond. You are muffled with your thoughts. And so take the uh, guidance, take the visibility, take the influences around you to make that happen for you to come out of that poverty trap. Okay, UN um, says unemployment and underemployment lie at the core of poverty. For the poor, labor or unskilled work is often only an asset that they can use to improve their well-being. Hence, the creation of the productive employment opportunities is essential for us to achieve poverty reduction and sustaining some economic and social development. It is crucial to provide decent jobs 
that both secure income and provide empowerment for the poor, especially the women and the younger people. So again, a very, very powerful message um, to be able to handle that poverty, assess the different needs of the different people in the various poverty classifications, and then kind of uh, make that difference for them. So we at Touch Alive have a very um, amazing platform that's been built for mentoring and career help. And uh, I would definitely call on you folks to come out there, be a mentor, be a mentee, uh, give back in any form, and uh, you will find the opportunity with the career uh, help um, service that we have. Lastly, I want each one of you to pledge something for me. And Muhammad Ali says, war against nations are fought to change maps. War against poverty are fought to map change, right? So I've given you guys many scenarios to think about and the different facets of poverty and the help that people can um, engage in. So let's pledge today to not only address the food and shelter needs, which becomes almost automatically the first reaction to all of us when we want to help somebody, but to influence the community and to stay employed and garner a source of income for them and make that uh, a generational thing of wealth and well-being for everyone in your family and your society at large. So let's live by the philosophy of learning how to handle the problems in the situations, then earn enough money through a good career, and then return back to the community to support the community. So uh, that's what I'd like to leave you with, and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference, and thank you once again.